We've heard so many times that we need to keep our viewers engaged, that we need to try different types of content until something sticks for our audience or that we need to get better just by a little bit with every single upload. But my question is, how do you do that? I feel like I've heard this advice so many times, but I'm always waiting for the next step. I'm like, okay, yes, I heard you, but what's the next step? What do we do now? Don't leave me hanging, girl, please don't. And I feel like they're always leaving me hanging. Well, you're in luck because today I'm giving you the secret sauce. And this is like my own secret sauce because I've worked with over 500 creators and businesses and I've helped them get better with creating content and solidifying a feel good social media strategy so that they're able to actually stick with content creation. And so that's more sustainable for them. So I wanna do the same thing for you. That's why today I'm giving you five different ways that you can make your content better. Now let's go ahead and get into it. The first way is to capture a variety of shots and angles. We're starting off really easy here, but I feel like a lot of people always get stuck here. They're always asking me for a shot list or they're asking me to give them ideas on how they can capture different angles. And to me, it's very simple. It's just that I think people are overcomplicating it because they need to get creative with their shots. And sometimes creativity it actually no not sometimes all the time creativity really takes a lot of energy out of you because it takes a lot of mental thought and so what i would say what i would advise is if you are recording a vlog or if you're recording a talking head video and you need to get b-roll instead of creating a shot list maybe you can create like a general shot list especially for b-roll but when you're out recording a vlog you don't need to get a list of shots to record you just go about your day and what I would highly recommend to do is as you're going about your filming process throughout the day is to just get different shots back to back. Now, what I mean by this is don't record a medium shot and then back to back or the next shot you record, don't get another medium shot. Instead of getting a medium shot and medium shot back to back, I would recommend to get whatever shot you're gonna get. So if it's a medium shot, record that medium shot. And then the very next shot has to be any other shot that is not a medium shot. So this could be a close up. This could be a long shot. This could be an establishing shot. This could be a point of view shot. This could be a worm's eye view, a bird's eye view. And by keeping this in mind and just keeping a mental note of getting a different shot every single time you hit record, then this eliminates the need to think of I don't know what what are the shots that i need to get it's just like okay the next shot i just have to get at a different angle the next shot i just have to get at a different distance from the camera or from the subject and i feel like it's as, as simple as that so let's say you are doing a day in my life vlog and maybe you are i don't know going to the store you can get a long shot of you walking into the store and then you can get a point of view shot of you grabbing the cart and then you can get a close-up shot of you grabbing a product putting into the cart. You can get a medium shot of you walking throughout the store and every single shot is gonna be different from the very previous one. So you can even do like a medium shot, close up, medium. As long as it's not medium, medium, back to back, then you're good. I feel like it helps a lot to take off that stress of needing to know or needing to figure out what you're gonna do next. And even though you have to figure out like what is the next shot, I just feel like just having that streamline, knowing that you can get any shot that you want, as long as it's not the same shot as the very last one that you just recorded, it eases a lot of people's minds. At least it eases my mind and a lot of creators that I've helped. So don't get the same exact shot as the last one that you recorded. Make sure it's a different shot from the last one. But by keeping this in mind, it'll make the filming process a lot more seamless when it comes to recording your vlogs or even recording B-roll. When you're recording B-roll for talking head videos, you can definitely make a general shot list. And then when you go out and record it, just get different angles or different distances from whatever subject or yeah, just like different distances, different shots, different angles of that exact of that one shot of that one thing that you wrote down so if you have a list like you have to record yourself running in the field you have to record yourself walking to the store something like that get like three different angles of that one shot three different angles of the next shot three different angles of the next shot so then you have a variety of footage to choose from and you can use it for future videos as well so it makes it that much easier um just to have just like general list and then knowing you can get three different shots of each thing on the list. 
The second way to make your videos better is by implementing the two stories, one video method. This is going to require a bit more thought energy than the last tip, but this works with a lot of content. This works for a lot of short, especially short form content. But essentially what this is, is you're telling two stories at the same time. You're telling two stories in one video, exactly as the method states. But that might sound a little bit confusing. Like, how do you do that? That sounds like it requires way too much thought energy when actually it doesn't. So essentially what you are showing in your video is going to be pretty unrelated to what you're telling in the video. So you're going to be showing something and then you're going to be telling something because pretty much at least what is pretty normal for content as you see online is a vlog and somebody's narrating what they're doing in their vlog. So they're showing what they're telling and they're telling what they're showing. And then the other way is if you are recording a talking head video or you're just adding B-roll to any type of content, then you're typically recording B-roll that's related to what you're saying, that's related to what's being narrated, that's related to the video text in general. So that's typically what you see online. But in this case, with this method, what you are showing on video is gonna be different from what you are telling in the video. And this style or this way of creating content works very well for short form content. An example of this would be a get ready with me video. So maybe somebody's putting on makeup or doing their hair or doing something just to get ready for a day or getting ready for the day. And it's paired with a story time of how they caught their ex cheating. Another example is going to be maybe like your a baker you're a baker content creator and you are recording a point of view uh, an entire video that's a point of view shot maybe of like the top of the stove and it's just showing you getting ingredients and grabbing your kitchen tools and creating a meal but at the same time what is being told is maybe a story of how you met beyonce or something like that so the narration or the the voice or the text on screen could be completely different from what is being shown on the screen and i feel like this gives creators two different opportunities to gauge their audience because not only is there something visually telling or something visually interesting but there's also something audibly different and audibly interesting and it's just like two different opportunities to have your audience as engaged as possible and i feel like this works super well with short form content and if you are someone who's trying to implement any of these ways of content creation into your social media strategy then two stories one video would be something that could work very well for you so i definitely recommend to try that the third way to make your content even better is by using tons of sound effects and music. I find this to work very well with short form content, vlogs, demonstration videos, anything that shows just like regular gestures instead of just someone sitting and talking, if that makes sense. And if you've watched ASMR videos, and you've enjoyed them, most likely you've enjoyed them because of the auditory aspect of this content. Maybe you hear the sounds of somebody like tapping or you hear the sound of somebody stirring wood in a bowl of liquid or you watch people eat and it's just the auditory part is what really heightens the viewer's experience, which is why I feel like this could help enhance your content even further. Interesting enough, my husband told me about a study that he heard about where uh, there was a study on Call of Duty gamers, and the reason why a lot of active gamers stuck with Call of Duty is because of the auditory sounds that was coming from the games. And honestly, that's one of the reasons why I play Call of Duty is because of the sound effects. The sound effects are very satisfying to hear, and as you play and as you eliminate people it just it, the sound is just like very satisfying and I feel like it's an ASMR type of thing and so with sound effects there's a lot of creators that I follow where they leverage sound effects in their videos and it's not the natural sounds it sounds edited into the videos but because of that it makes me more drawn into their content it makes it more interesting for me to stick around and watch it just because of that small touch of adding sound effects in the videos so next time you create a vlog or you create a demonstration video, or if you have any movement or gestures or anything in the videos that could actually have really good natural sound, I would recommend to emphasize or, you know, really hone in on getting really good crisp sounds of the natural sounds that everything is making. So like, for example, if you're recording yourself doing a vlog, walking into like, I don't know, a dress store and you're trying on heels, hone in like zoom not zoom in but like put your mic by the shoes 
and you can even record this without i mean you could you know cover your camera and like put the lens on and just record the audio but record the sound of the shoes click clacking and then you can use that in your video like you can take the audio version of that video file and then put it over your video so that you can emphasize the sounds of the clicking of the heels so if you're not able to get really good crisp sounds of the natural things happening in your videos you can always use sound effects from third-party software so one that i would recommend is epidemic sound and i'm not sponsored by them but i love epidemic sound for all of their music and sound effect choices i actually do have an affiliate link in the description below if you want to check that out but epidemic sound offers so many sound effects for you to utilize so if you want any type of sound effects with any pop-up text on your screen or for any photos that you want to show on your screen that just like pop up there's good sound effects for that um if you are putting together your vlog and there's a lot of things in your vlog where you can actually add in more natural sounds like zooming cars or walking like steps opening shutting the door and hearing the click of the door close all the way maybe you're opening letters just hearing that rip of the paper it can be enhanced by adding that sound effect over your video and when you watch it back, it's probably gonna seem so much interesting. It's not just for you, but for your viewers as well. Now for music, I this is a, something I recommend, especially for vloggers. If you are vlogging different segments throughout your day, then I would recommend to use different music for every segment of your video. So for example, if you are doing a day in your life and let's say you are waking up and you're recording yourself getting out of bed, getting ready for the day, then I recommend to use music that is very like soft, kind of upbeat but it just like kind of it it's satisfying or like it's gentle like gentle morning music something something like that i would use that during that segment of your video and then let's say you are going to the gym for the day and you're getting a pump in and stuff like that then i would use music that is high energy that's something that someone would listen to if they're working out something that just matches the vibe of that segment and then let's say the next part of your segment or the next segment of your video you're running errands and so maybe you've you know you've gotten you got ready for the day, you worked out, and now you're ready to rue the day and you're out running errands. So then for this segment, I would go ahead and put upbeat positive music. So make, so use epidemic sound, download different types of music, and each segment that you have in your video, I would use a different soundtrack just to kind of like enhance that part of that video and so that you don't have the same song throughout the entire video. You're enhancing like the mood of I don't know, you're just enhancing, you're making your video better by having those different types of songs for different segments. It's like in films or movies, if somebody passes away, like maybe they have like very sad music and then if there's a very serious part, then they're gonna put very serious music and it, it keeps the film interesting. So I would say implement that into your content strategy, see how that, you know, how, how that goes for you and your audience. And I feel like it also makes it fun. I feel like choosing music um, and adding that into your videos is a fun task to do. And so, you know, have fun with it. And I feel like if you're having fun with it, then your audience will enjoy your content as well. The fourth way to make your content even better is by implementing the element of surprise. Or in other words, I like to call this the psych gotcha method. Okay, no, I, I made that up. I totally just made that up. So in the film industry, this is actually known as plot twists. That's simply what it is, it's plot twists. This basically is just catching your audience off guard or something happens in the film or in a video that your audience didn't expect to happen. The way that you would incorporate this into your content is have your viewers think that something is gonna go a certain way, but then you do or say something that will catch them by surprise. An example of this is, let's say you are a fitness account, you post fitness content, and maybe you make a video and it's called how to grow your glutes fast. And your audience is gonna think that you're going to be giving tips on you know, exercises that grow your glutes fast or you're going to demonstrate different glute exercises that really help with glute growth but instead you take a surprise route and maybe the first exercise is 10 reps of proposing and then so you show yourself going to a proposal position and just like doing that multiple times and this could be in placement of lunges so instead of saying lunges you're saying 10 reps of the proposal or 10 reps of you proposing another example of 
another exercise would be maybe you say 10 reps of you picking up the spare tire to change out the flat tire because your boyfriend doesn't know how to do it and then the exercise that that's supposed to be is sumo squats but instead you're just demonstrating yourself kind of like assuming the the sumo squat position and like doing it but the title of it is picking up the spare tire to replace your flat tire since your man doesn't know how to do it something like that so as you go through your content i want you to ask yourself how can i trick my audience how can i surprise my viewer or what can i add that will feel almost random but relevant to this piece of content so all in all you want to surprise your viewers you want to do something off the grain and do something different that'll kind of catch them off guard now the fifth way to make your content even better is by being yourself i feel like this is the most important tip i'm not going to lie because sharing a creative space with ai tools which is kind of scary it's so important that you emphasize just being yourself being authentic being genuine and just showing up as you would anywhere else because people relate to people people connect with people and i feel like that's so important in a creative space especially since we have all these artificial intelligence tools that um, are trying to take over everyone's jobs and stuff like that um but for the most part the one thing that ai cannot take away from us is how unique we each are and how we're able to connect with content creators or how content creators are able to connect with their viewers and that's that human connection only humans go through human experiences only humans can connect with other humans simply because we're humans so in your content show up as you normally would with your friends with your families with communities that you're a part of and it's okay to feel a little bit fake especially at the beginning when you're a smaller creator or you're completely new because you have already consumed so much content from other creators you might be or you might start off accidentally mirroring the personality of those creators which is completely fine i just i want you to get out there and i want you to put yourself out there and honestly it's okay you will eventually get to that point where you're completely yourself on camera and you're not mirroring other creators uh the more content you put out there the more comfortable you'll be on camera and the more comfortable you'll be on camera the more authentic and the more genuine you'll show up in your own videos Something that I would recommend for you to do is have some type of signature in your videos. That could be a signature greeting, that could be a signature look, that could be a signature saying that you'll be known for. Just honestly, not only is that really fun, but this will also incorporate into your brand. So you're building up your brand and people are gonna know you because of something you say or because of something you do or because of something that you incorporate into your look. Um, even if you have certain text pop up or certain graphics pop up a lot in your content or if you have a certain way that your videos look that's very consistent across all your videos, if someone were to see that, and they're like one of your loyal followers or they've seen your content a lot, then they're gonna know it's you. They're gonna know it's your content and that goes into your branding. So not only is it fun, not only does it go into your branding, but it will also differentiate you from the others, which I feel like is also important as well with being yourself, being authentic and being genuine. Now, for example, uh, let's say you create a signature greeting and let's say you're a baker and let's say your name is Baker Betty or something like that. Uh, maybe when you start, the, the way you start all of your videos is, hey bakers, let's shake and bake something like that and then if somebody were to hear that specific line hey bakers let's shake and bake they'll know oh my gosh that's baker betty so that's part of the branding part of your signature part of like you know people knowing who you are just because of that that differentiates you from other creators in your industry um in your niche and i just feel like it's a lot of fun another example is maybe you create a signature look so maybe you always wear a high ponytail with a giant scrunchie or maybe you always wear red lipstick or maybe you always have gold earrings have a you, you can incorporate a signature look or maybe you always wear a sweater in every single video no matter what even if it's hot that could be fun and that could make you stand out from other creators in your niche and people will recognize you because of that so write a list of different signatures that you can incorporate into your content and then choose one to three that you can incorporate across all of your videos and i just say have a lot of fun with it because there's nothing cooler than being able to just like add something to your videos that's you and then being recognized for that i just think that would be pretty awesome I hope you found this video helpful. I do have another one just for you. It's called creating content with just your phone. I highly recommend to check it out by clicking on the video on the screen and don't worry, I'll meet you there. Bye.